you're pretty well cut up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we had, uh, let me think now, there was uh, one of the dumpkey boys used to come in the shop. He was a fellow about your size, only about uh, uh, heavier. Uh, Shorty, Shorty, uh, he was uh, Shorty's brother, actually. Uh, Homer Dumpkey, and boy, was he a terrific guy for playing an instrument. He played the bones. Imagine that. You ever see them rattlers? No. Oh, boy. He, he used his own bones, yeah. too. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's crazy. But you know, a lost art that I want to ask you fellas about, barbershop singing is terrific, and I love it. But you know what? Nobody hums anymore. You don't hear anybody humming much. You know, it's a, it's a lost art. It's, a, it's one of the sounds of history, like uh, the flopping of galoshes. Remember that sound? <laughs> yeah. It's a nice sound, you know? Or, uh, let me think, uh, uh, this humming idea, I want to see if you could barbershop hum. I know you can barbershop sing, but I want to play back home in Indiana, and humming is a, could we get the entire audience with us today, everybody sitting at home, <clears throat> hum along with us, and humming is easy, you don't have to hurt yourself much, it's not a, I mean, you can, uh, you can do whatever else you're doing, you can be, uh, you know, uh, chewing gum, or you could be, uh, uh, eating uh, uh, garlic, anything. You, you can keep on humming while you're doing it. So I'd like to play back home in Indiana and see how the humming would sound. Everybody in the entire world humming along. Will you do that for me? Okay. Help sure. you. Okay. Sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. that back in Mount Ida, Ohio, which reminds me, I got a little letter here from Mama, all the way from Mount Ida, Ohio. Yeah, yeah, I gotta read it. See, it says here, Dear Razor. Yeah. <laughs> Mama always said I was a cute little shaver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elsie Crack and her son, Gomar stopped by the house today. My, he's a bright boy. He can say dada, mama, and wave bye-bye. <laughs> Which should help him a lot when he goes into the army next week. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh uh, he, uh, I saw Homer Garrett's uh, Hollywood Square dancers in the crawdad room at Snyder Swamp last week. <laughs> oh, it makes me feel homesick. <laughs> Oh, they were wonderful. I wish everyone could see them. Well, I got a surprise for Mama. Yeah, we have Homer Garrett and his Hollywood Square dancers right here. And all they need now are their fellas, right, girls? Yeah. Oh, by George. And here they are. Oh, oh. oh. Circle top, let loose and tight. Then we press back, single file, lady, the lady. One, two, three, flowers, three, out to the right. Then take it off, take that file, take it off. Then take that part, and take that part.
We don't know what he'll do for an encore. <laughs> you know, I think, though, seriously, we, we've been kidding here for the moment, but the barbershop singing is such a beautiful, beautiful thing. Wouldn't it be great if we could just have everybody, instead of getting mad at everybody, sing like that all over the world? Oh, all over the world, that'd everywhere. be great. Yeah, a barbershop so world, beautiful. that's the plan, a barbershop world. Now, how would it work? Could, could the whole world sing the way these folks all do? In well, Miami? why don't we try it with this audience right here? These folks right here? Yeah, yeah these folks. Well, there's some pretty nice loud mouths, uh, loud uh, voices in the crowd, I can see that. Yeah. Give us a note, let's see how what they can work? do. How would we do it? All right, let's go. Try it. I want a girl just sound too good. Hold it. Hold it. No, no, no. That doesn't something. sound, that doesn't good. sound so good. You know what's wrong here, Dennis? I hate to say it. They don't have the straw hats. That's what makes yeah. it. Oh. Yeah, they don't well, have any wait a minute. Hats. They can have one of mine well, here. Sure. Mine mine. Too. <laughs> okay. Whoop. Now, let's see. Hey. I got one. <laughs> now, that's what they need. Now, let's hear them they do it. They need huh? those hats. We, yeah. Everybody sing their own parts. Is that the way it goes? Right. Yeah. Okay, let her go. Let's hear it now. All right. Notes. Oh, I TV presents Give Me Liberty, a television first, an important and different bicentennial salute to the United States of America. You will meet John Freeborn, portrayed by actor Robert Culp, a man of many faces who will take you into the spirit of America in its early days. See Give Me Liberty Tuesday night at 8.30 on Channel 11. A fantasy world unfolds before our eyes as an old friend materializes. Pinocchio, the wooden puppet who springs to life tomorrow at 3.30 here on Channel 11. <laughs> After many years in public life, I continue to be amazed at the good things, the great things that people do in response to a great need. 
Programs usually seen at this time will not air in order to bring you the new Jerry Lewis Telethon, next on Channel 11. Live from Las Vegas, the new Jerry Lewis Telethon, with Vicki Carr, Jack Benny, Mel Torme, Jack Lemon, Jim Neighbors, Kelly Savalas, Dorothy Collins, Robert Goulet, Anna Marie Albagetti, B.B. King, Joe Stuarty, Gloria Loring, the Hudson Brothers, Jack Callens, Mel Tillis, and many, many more. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Jerry Lewis. Thank you very much. Thank you, and good evening and welcome to those of you that just joined us. We welcome you to our ninth annual muscular dystrophy battle, the fight against muscular dystrophy with the assistance and the help of the world of beautiful people, show people, with all of the fine individuals who care enough to take the time, and they indeed do. Uh, I would feel terribly remiss if I didn't acknowledge the two giants. Uh, I hear an awful lot about people having a piece of the rock. Well, I got two of the best pieces that the rock ever put out. Namely one, Mr. Ed McMahon. Thank you, Jerry. Pleasure to be with you again, as always. Thank you. Yes, we will have a little libation somewhere during the evening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, the second part of the rock that I could very rarely do without, and he is that, literally a rock, my accompanist conductor in his 25th year of living with this insanity, Mr. Lou Brown and the orchestra. <laughs> We welcome you and let you know that we have some very important business at hand during the course of the evening and the morning and the day and the night. Uh, we will be uh, reminding you that the business at hand is what we like to consider an entertainment show to give you as much pleasure as we can possibly muster up amongst all of ourselves. And at the same time to let you know that there is a tab, a tab that we uh, impose upon your good conscience and ask for your assistance because we are getting awfully close. And uh, we are one of the few health agencies that can proclaim that through the assistance of the American public, we have gone from complete obscurity to something of value, something of importance, and something that is constantly in the minds of the people. Uh, our Labor Day has become a labor of love for all of us, and the American people have made it very clear to us that they care enough to give us an awful lot of money that will go to research, and which will ultimately find the cause and cure of this vicious killer. We have some beautiful kids of mine who would love to march in front of these cameras and say thank you personally. I have for the last almost 25 years been their spokesman, so I have to say thank you for them. We will not march them in front of the cameras. We maintain that they have a tremendous integrity and a dignity which we feel we must uphold, and we will march in front of the cameras. We will sweat in front of the cameras, and we will work our hearts out in front of the cameras so that they can sit with complete integrity and dignity hopefully awaiting the end result, which, of course, will be the right numbers. And I'd like you to meet one of the people that gives me the energy and gives me the, uh, the drive to uh, put seven months before this show of, of laborious and loving work. And uh, he represents maybe 135,000 of my kids. He is our national poster child. He is my very best friend. He's my pal. And he's one of the most super kids you ever met in your whole life. And he loves me like crazy, because the minute he looks at me, he smiles. And when I look at him, I want to kiss his head. Michael Newsom, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. What a ham. Did you see him milk the crowd? So, um, hi, Michael. Hi. Michael says, hi. So everybody knows Michael from Louisville, right? Right. Right. And whenever Michael with me, I always say, hi, Michael. And he say, hi, Jerry. And we say, hi, all the time, don't we? 
Yeah. Right. Hot damn anyhow. <laughs> um, we made up, uh, we, w Michael and I had a picture taken. Mac Brewer shot a beautiful picture of us. And uh, I decided that we would send it to all of our friends around the, the network, all the broadcasters and all the, the loving friends that we have, Ed McMahon and David Hartman and all of those that are closest to us and all of our friends in show business. And all we wrote on the picture was, this is what it's all about. And Michael is indicative of what it's all about. And uh, <coughs> he's something else. He is so shy and so quiet in front of an audience, but when he and I get together and we just have a little rap session, I never get a word in, believe it or not. And um, well, that's what we're doing here. We're here so that we can make things better for Mike and for all of his friends, all of my kids. And we're gonna do what we can. We have 20 hours ahead of us of uh, a lot of love and a lot of output of energy and concern. And we would like a little feedback, primarily your energy, which is nothing more than getting to the phone. Your output, naturally your dollars. Uh, you'll make two people very happy if we come up fat. And we won't be terribly sad if we don't. We, uh, we understand. It's going to be a little more painful understanding. We would like to not have to go through that pain. We would like it to be just the right finish for what we're doing. Right, Mike? Right. Right. See that? Is that right, Michael? Right. Right. Do you know I love you? Yeah. OK. <laughs> Gee, we rehearsed for two days. Not really. Uh, we're, we're going to forge ahead now. Oh, we have to do that. We got to see what it looks like. You didn't see the opening when we, when we did the New York special. And uh, we're going to run it so you can see it. And I want to see it too. Okay? Okay. Okay. All right. If you look at the Ida Four in the studio, we're all going to look at it because the words of the song are terribly important. And uh, it's not a case of being lazy. I'd love to do it again. But I really don't want to grind out the orchestra this early. So we're going to play the VTR, the videotape of the opening of the show that we did about 90 minutes ago. Michael and I will watch. Please watch with us. Listen to the words. It says it all. OK, Artie, let it go. Jerry Orbach, Lynn Redgrave, Lillian Roth. And scenes from the Broadway productions of Raisin and Over Here. And now, live in Las Vegas from the Sahara Hotel, here's Jerry Lewis. If your heart is filled with sorrow, you can make a bright tomorrow. Even though you're not so wealthy, you can make somebody healthy. Call me. Make us a pledge and just call me. Don't be afraid, come on, call me. Call me cause I'll be around. Here's your chance to bring some gladness. Help to ease the pain and sadness. Keep the wheels of science turning. Keep the spark of hope still burning. Call me. Get on the phone and just call me. Send us a check once you call me. Call me cause I'll be around. Don't make me holler, just send a dollar. Or as much as you can spare. It's what you do now, it's up to you now. Show how much you really care. Show the world how much you care. Only with your contribution will we find the real solution. Wishful thinking won't reach if you're filled with love and food. Call me. Make us a pledge and just call me. Send us a check once you call me. Now is the time you should call me. Call me cause that's why I'm here. 
That's why I'm here. Thank you. Not bad for an old man. Ah, it was okay. Yeah, it's very restful to be working while watching. <laughs> we now present the beginning, the start, the start of our... Uh, Show from this point on at uh, 7:40. Uh, at uh, six. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's late now. In. Uh, did you see the clock, Jerry? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I can see it. Oh, did they give me a clock? You want to see a clock they gave me? That's some clock. That's John Wayne's pocket watch. Uh, yeah, that's some clock. I said, get me a big clock. They got me a clock. Oh, <laughs> it's uh, 20 minutes of eight, and we present to you a young lady, who, uh, well, not only charming, but. Uh, She's kind of a good luck charm. She opened the show for us last year and uh, kicked us off into a fantastic success. We wanted very much for her to do it again. Would you please welcome the fantastic Miss Vicki Carr, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Every time I try to tell you the words just come out wrong So I'll have to say I love you in a I'm a witch, I'm a lady, 
Vicky Carr, and you are dangerously near me. Listen, I want to say, you know, in that one song in particular, there's a buzz. Yeah, mm. we're just closing the curtain. Okay, uh, that uh, I said I was young and healthy and tan, all this and that, and this is, of course, what this telethon is all about. Uh, and it's really like, I'm very happy that last year was as successful as it is, but as with anything that is good, it's got to keep on and it keeps going higher. You just can't settle because otherwise you really never get anywhere. And unfortunately, I know now from uh, having traveled all over that anything that there is that's wrong, no matter what financial position each and every one of us are in, that we're the only ones that can really do anything to correct the things that are really wrong. And this thing, especially in muscular dystrophy. I want to say thank you for inviting me and I was happy to be able to come. Well, you were the good luck charm. That's how I introduced you, and we meant it. Thank we, you. We, we're, ve we're a very superstitious group. We think that... <laughs> so am I. Don't, don't change good stuff. That's why I'm sure that I got Hartman all the time. I said, David, get over here. McMahon and Louie and all of the people that have been closest to us. And uh, we just don't want to change good things. And you did bring us luck. Thank you. So we're delighted that you came back, and we hope you'll bring us the same luck this year. Um. <laughs> If we continue to do the same thing that we did last year, that means that I would like to say something to when I, my people, my Spanish-speaking friends that may not be able to understand in English. I think you especially helped so much last year, I may. All right? Yeah. Uh, a todos mis amigos que hablan español. Es que ayer por todo ver estaba. Agita la lata. Que veo todo. Oh, what I want to say is that... Oh, that's English. Right. Oh, that's Spanish. <laughs> Les quiero preguntar, por favor, hicieron tanto, tanto que fue tan bueno el año pasado, que yo sé que es una cosa que es muy difícil, a veces con el dinero, pero quiero que saben todos ustedes que esta cosa no le pasa nomás a los blancos, a los negros, pero a todos. Si no le puede pasar a usted, puede ser que a su hijo, a su hija. Y cualquier cosa que pueden mandar, 50 centavos, un dólar, es bastante para que todos ustedes sepan que han ayudado una gran causa como esto. When she's right, she's right, boy. Thank you. Thank you, Vicky. And when uh, Vicky's going to do another number for us, she's kindly consented to perform some more. When she gets she gets through with that, then I will talk to my people. Zog Gornish, you have been there after you know after his neighbors But here's a song that I feel if we all kind of uh, think on what the lyrics say to this. And we all keep it in mind and keep those phones ringing. It'll help. Here's to the winners. Lift up your glasses. Here's to the glory still to be. Here's to the battle, whatever the cause, to ask the best of ourselves and give much more. Here's to the hero. Those who move mountains. Here's to the miracle they make us see. Here's to our brother. Here's to our sister. Here's to the Here's to 
Hotel Sahara in Las Vegas, O.C. Smith, John McNally, Will Gear, Charo, and Jim Neighbors. So don't go away. Damon on the Orient Express, Toadie Fields, and Sunchild, so don't go away. I'm the 
Thank you very much, gentlemen, and thank you to the Sweet Inspirations. This is the medicine that does something for you if you've done too much to yourself. It speeds to settle the stomach you stuffed and hurries to help the aching body you indulged. When you have too much of a good thing and you feel uncomfortable because of it, take Alka-Seltzer, fast-acting Alka-Seltzer, the bubbly drink that helps you if you've helped yourself to too much. Consider how exquisitely a flower is made. Like a child, a miracle of life's creative mystery. As a flower deprived of life's vital elements may wither and die, so the healthy young muscles of a child stricken by muscular dystrophy are slowly starved and rendered useless. But someday, through the miracle of science, the wasted muscles of a child with dystrophy may be renewed. This is Joan Crawford urging you to help make that miracle possible. Thank you. Hey, we have a fantastic pledge here from Sweet Adams of the Perfect Gentleman Escrow Service. A pledge of $500. And he challenges each employee to donate $25. Thank you very much. How much time have we... Oh, and uh, it's just been raised $200. Thank you very much, Mr. Adams and Perfect Gentleman Escrow Service. Now, I think it's... Uh, oh, yeah. $173,344. And it's still not enough. Please. We're falling behind last year, further and further behind. We've got to start catching up. There's plenty of seats in the studio audience. If you want to come down here to KTTV, meanwhile, let's go back to Las Vegas. More entertainment and Jerry Lewis. <laughs>
time. It's that uh, time of night when uh, every little bit that we get counts a great deal. Oh, yeah. The uh, tote board has not moved as rapidly as it did before, so we want to get all those well, pieces of contribution. Mr. myself, all the lovely people, we'll be back. Please hang in there. Listen to the lovely words of Mr. McMahon as we break the stations for 174 beautiful love stations along the network so that they can do their thing, and we'll be back in 10 minutes. 10 minutes, New York. Hang in there, but come back. She was Irish. She was always loaded, too, wasn't she? Well, one out of two is not bad. <laughs> yes. Okay. We're coming back. We're coming, we're coming close to coming back. We're coming close to coming back. Yeah, we're coming back in a second. We're coming back any minute. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Perfect. Okay, Lou. All right, ladies and gentlemen, coming up on the 20th, final hour of the Jerry Lewis Labor Day Telethon, live from the Hotel Sahara in Las Vegas. And this hour features the Jackson Five, Robert Goulet, Wayne Newton, and many other surprises. And across that final tally. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's a very happy man, Mr. Jerry Lewis. Here we is. And the lovely tote board going into the 20th hour reads $14,251,497. And counting. And counting. And is that ever lovely counting? Yeah. Okay. We are about to introduce some terrific people. Terrific people. Are we getting close to ready? Well, while we're waiting, uh, Jerry, I have to, one introduction for you. The president of Sara Lee Kitchens, a man uh -huh. very close to us all through the telethon. Here's Tom Barnum again. Yeah. Tom Barnum, ladies and gentlemen, the president of Sara Lee. Hi, Tom. Nice to see you again. Jerry, when you were out at the plant, I promised you 100,000 bucks. Oh, 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 I'm it's, e it's easier to go ahead of those guys than behind them, so I right. appreciate the chance. When you were out at the plant, I promised you 100,000 bucks. The employees and the brokers wouldn't let me get away with it, 
and they now have a new goal of two hundred thousand dollars so and if the consumers out there the people who keep sending in those labels continue to do so we've got a good shot at three hundred thousand bucks but right now to help Ed hit his number here's a hundred thousand for good luck It's a pleasure doing business with Rick. Tom Bonham of Sara Lee, $100,000. What a lovely man. What a great operation. What terrific people. I love you, Tom Bonham. In spite of all of that stuff you send me to get me fat. I, I had to make the mistake of telling him I love German chocolate cake. There isn't a city I've come to where he doesn't send a little note, enjoy yourself, and he sends me boxes of Sara Lee made in pure gorgeous butter, all of those marvelous quality products I put on nine pounds just to my feet. But for a hundred grand, I'll eat the boxes, Tom. Thank you. Excuse me, sir. You gonna tell me that Larry Pergosin is here? Yes, Larry is here. The How do you think we keep Tom? Watches, the official he's my timekeeper of the Jerry Lewis Telethon. I'm sure he's got good news. Larry Pergosin, ladies and gentlemen. One of our MDA people. Been with us a long time, hi Larry. Needless to say, you are the greatest. And in addition to having made the tote boards for 177 stations, we'd like to present you with a check for $5,000. Thank you, Larry. Checks in the amount of $500 from the employees and executives. And to take a page out of Jan Murray's book, Sue and I would like to present $200 in honor of my dad's 80th birthday. Thank you. Thank you very much, Larry. Larry Pergosin built all of those boards for 174 stations along the network. A lot of money from Hellbros Watches. Thank you, Larry. God bless you. What'd you say, Gary? Where? Why don't we introduce him? How would you like to see Kojak? Telly Savalas. Come on, Kelly. There he is. There he is. That's the man. Uh huh. Here, this is better. Uh huh. <laughs> hey, Jerry. You know, for most of my adult life, I've been watching Jerry Lewis's telethon for, and on behalf of muscular dystrophy. And during the course of those years, you know, there have been many successes, many different professions. And now we have the success in, uh, in a television series. But I honestly feel and believe that one of my biggest triumphs would be on the Jerry Lewis telethon. And I thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Telly. Well, you know the most marvelous thing about what's happened? I think that Kojak, could we kill the amp for a second? Could, uh, we're humming like mad here. Is it an amp or is it a speaker? Give me a break, Mark, help. I think, uh, this is just my opinion because I'm a tremendous fan of the show and I have been from the day one. I think that the reason that it's so good, aside from the acting, the directing, the scripts, the material, the involvement, I think that the audience, the public, have rooted from the beginning. I think they rooted for a guy with a lollipop who had a warm, lovable, wonderful thing happening to him. That's where it's at. I think it's not bad. I think it's true, Telly. I really do. I think it's true. I think you have to have the material, you have to have the character, you have to have all that good stuff. But if you can have, as you did from the beginning, a rooting interest, and the people were rooting, they'd have made it good if it wasn't, because they cared. I know I was one of them. You notice I haven't interrupted him yet. He's saying he's wonderful. But <laughs> now I'm going to analyze the success of the show. <laughs> Here, let me light your lollipop for you. Please. Aha. Uh -huh. I blew my image. <laughs> I think the success of Kojak is, you know, when you get an ugly gorilla like me, getting up there and using a documentary approach to a New York cop. I think I'm delighted with, with its success because of that reason. I'm just an ordinary guy trying to, trying to give a picture of what New York life is like. And I'm delighted. Well, let's talk about you and this, uh, this great telethon. You know, I was invited to come to Las Vegas and you to participate 
with the wonderful shows, the Jackson Fives, and you see the Wayne Newtons, and on and on and on. And you're having yourself a good time. And then you sneak up to the crap table, and the blackjack dealer looks at you. The pit bosses take all your money. For the most part, you're having a great deal of fun. And then comes the time to go home. And you're depressed because you didn't win, or because you lost. And you didn't think about Jerry Lewis and his muscular dystrophy. And you get to feel a little bit better for some strange reason. And that's why I find it quite a thrill to come here, Jerry, just when I'm ready to go home. To tell you what a wonderful job you're doing, and I'm delighted I come here and say so publicly. Thank you, Telly. Thank you. <laughs> Telly Savala, some kind of nice man. <laughs> that show will be on as long as he wants it. He's got it made. And he should have. That's terrific. I had a show on television once for an hour. From the MGM Grand Hotel, we present the dynamic talents of the five young men that everybody's so happy and excited to see with the screaming amps and with the stretching noises. And they're gonna do one number for us because we gotta really push, but the one number's gonna be worth everything because we got for you now the Jackson Five.
Uh, Jackson 5, beautiful. Thank you, fellas. Right on. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Terrific. Beautiful. Thank you for your help. And everybody loves seeing you. Bravo. Let's take them off with a nice hand, everybody. They were beautiful. Eddie. We have Howie McLennan, president of the firefighters of this country. Howie, talk to me. Both together, Jerry. Final report, $246,338. From the firefighters. Thank you, Howie. Howie, baby. God bless you. Okay, Jerry, now we have representing McDonald's, Ernest Trey. Did you see that number up there, kid? I didn't want to, I didn't want to, you know, far be it from me to brag or anything. I didn't want to say anything, but can you see it? Can I see it? Let's not do nothing until we hear from the lovely McDonald's, and we may do something, and I'm a nervous wreck. Hi there. Hi. Jerry. Talk to me. I'm talking to you, Jerry. This is the final report from McDonald's. It's great to see that the board is totally lit and that all of our restaurants have reported. Everyone at McDonald's is proud to be a part of this great telethon for the third straight year. After all, we think it's fitting for us at McDonald's to help kids because we owe so much of our success to kids. Our final report includes these areas. The state of Michigan, except Detroit, which was reported earlier, $7,700. All of Texas, except Houston, which was reported earlier, $22,058. Listen to this one. New York City, $70,230. Chicago, $71,335. And the just reported cleanup figures from our restaurants across the country, $17,721.27. This makes a subtotal of $189,297. And are you ready? Here we go, McDonald's! <laughs> listen, listen, this is it. <laughs> what the world needs now, right, and brings our grand total from McDonald's and its customers to a final contribution of 751,100.